Hello everybody and thank you for joining me on a, another video of the continuing saga of the Chevy Bolt EV uh, recall and battery, call it an informational uh, gathering session. And this one's no different. So yesterday I was doing my semi-weekly uh, scouring of information with regards to the recall and trying to get some further updates on some of the fires that have been happening uh, in the last you know few weeks and some of those cases are really hush hush and I don't know why I haven't been able to get much data from too many sources I've reached out to a few friends in in cities uh, where these issues happened to see if the local news reported something or if something was said or or if there was any speculation as to what happened and I always try to find pictures of the you know of the event to try to see where you know the burn marks are where the you know where the most damage is if it came from a specific spot you know try to find the lowest common denominator to group fires by you know severity by location by you know how the the car was at the moment of of burn you know was it plugged in was it fully charged was it discharged was it you know abused uh, you know in any way you know and the good news is that in my scouring of information I came across this article this is on Chevrolet.com but I'll paste it down below for you uh, just because uh, you know it's it's just a centralized place to have it but it looks like GM and LG have finally come to an understanding and the LG battery plants in in both Holland and Hazel Park Michigan have resumed production I'm not gonna regurgitate this uh, this article you can read it down below but uh, it looks like there's going to be priorita prioritized battery replacements say that three, three times fast uh, I can't even say it once <laughs> but and, and so there's gonna be prioritized battery replacement as well as new advanced diagnostic software that will be able to monitor the battery a little bit more closely and detect any abnormal thresholds or signs of failure uh, hopefully predictively and how that system is going to be implemented you know whether it's going to use OnStar or some kind of cellular uh, phone home method I don't know or if it's gonna be up to you to check your app every day you know check your OnStar reports or, or whatnot to see you know if everything's green and, and good to go the good news is that GM seems to have found clusters of batteries that are more likely to be affected uh, you know by a fire than others and I don't know how they would do that. I'm guessing VIN numbers or whatnot, they are able to correlate uh, production lines or, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. That's, that's speculation on my part. But it says here that, you know, customers whose batteries were manufactured during specific build time frames uh, where GM believes battery defects appear to be clustered. So I guess they have that information and they're going to start scheduling that. Now within um october i believe they're going to start um shipping these so again this is something that would have to be uh followed up upon it doesn't really clearly state in this article what the time frames are they are saying that within approximately 60 days gm will begin launching this new diagnostic advanced diagnostic software package that will increase the available battery charging parameters over existing guidances. You know, and you know, it says here, it's designed to detect specific abnormalities, blah, blah, blah. Feel free to read it down below. But it looks like uh, there's finally some traction and finally something that we could sink our minds into in terms of uh, internalized stress or, or, or the relief that knowing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully this will be, you know, the one thing that puts this whole issue to bed. Um, so the final part of this article, which kind of made my brow 
brow furl earlier was updated guidance on parking. This part I'm gonna read verbatim because it's three lines. If customers are following GM's instructions issued above, which is, you know, the all the recall stuff, they can park in a location of their choice. In an abundance of caution, GM recommends customers leave ample space around their vehicle wherever they choose to park. GM is not aware of any fires that have occurred where customers followed their safety guidance in parking decks or otherwise. Cool. I feel a little bit better about that actually. I, I know last week when I was shooting outside of my office, I showed the cones on the, on the, in the parking spots and the planter. And of course there was a tree there, stuff that can totally burn. And um, at least 30 feet uh, away from the building. And I was doing what I could, but then the other night when I shot that you know, video after midnight when I was unplugging my car, I realized that I couldn't follow uh, GM's parking recommendations at all because no matter where I moved my car, I would be within 10 to 15 feet of either somebody else's property or my own property because, I mean, let's face it, what suburb was built with the idea that there would be a four-lane highway going through the middle of it because that's literally what you need in order to maintain 50 feet of space, right? Now you figure that lanes on the road are what, 10 feet wide? So five lanes? It, it is what it is, but um, it's just something to keep in mind. You know, if you're following the recommendations, you have to do what you have to do to make it right for you. You know, if it's parking your car on the curb because you don't want it close to your house, great. You know, maybe be considerate of your neighbors and don't park in front of their house or something like that. Maybe do what you can to just be smart about it, you know, and, and other than that, I'm really, really happy about this. I'll let you guys read this. I'm not going to uh, tie you guys up any longer. The conversation's always open down below in the comments, so uh, go on down there and uh, leave me your opinion. As always, I reply to every comment that YouTube notifies me about. I feel the need to mention that, by the way, because I don't get notified for every comment, especially replies to other comments. I don't know why I have it checked to be notified of every um, comment, so if you don't hear back from me, um, you know, drop us a line. There's uh, contact information for the channel in the channel information, uh, my email address and whatnot. I'm happy to have an email chat with you guys. And in the meantime, let's keep our heads on straight and look forward to the next two, maybe three months, and hopefully everything will start smoothing out and we'll see less and less of this uh, stuff uh, coming up, you know, with the fires and issues and recalls and buybacks and all of that stuff. Oh, by the way, if you're looking at a buyback, I did do some research on this yesterday. It looks like buybacks are specifically tied to uh, your state's lemon laws, whatever they are. And it looks like the only two states in the entire union that have really decent lemon laws are um, uh, Massachusetts and California. Sorry, Massachusetts slipped my mind. Uh, those two states seem to be the, uh, the mecca of success stories when it comes to uh, GM's buyback of a affected Bolt EV. Uh, there's also been successful swaps uh, between EV and ICE. So if you, if you need a car and you absolutely don't want to deal with EVs at this time, um, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, you know, on a personal note, but I understand you have to do what you have to do. Other states have uh, uh, shown higher um, failures with regards to buybacks, and there's reasons for that, but most of them tie back to the lemon laws. If you live in a state that doesn't have much enforcement over uh, lemon laws, then your buyback request may most likely be denied unless you have some compelling reason or otherwise to get you know your car bought back now also keep in mind you're not going to get every penny you paid for it uh, you're going to get a 
you know, what GM considers a reasonable rate. And it's obviously going to have whatever fees attached to it to, you know, to cover any costs that GM will incur because, I mean, that's, that's how it works. It's not like, oh, I paid 40K for this car, I should get 40K back for it. It doesn't work like that. Um, the idea is, and GM really hopes that, you know, people will follow their recommendations, their guidelines, and ultimately wait for a fix to be issued by LG and GM. So in the meantime, I wish all of you all the best. Um, I know this has been a very trying time for a lot of you and to those uh, 12 individuals and families that were affected directly by the Chevy Bolt um, going up in flames, you know, my my heartfelt condolences uh, on the loss of your property and your car and everything else uh, that came from that. You know, I did want to say that even though I, I've stood behind the technology, behind the car, and you guys already know how I feel about the car, I still feel like there is a fair shot to be given GM and LG. You know, they have relatively new, you know, technologies at work here. I mean, the Bolt EV line is only five years old. It's really hard to not expect there to be any issues that would need resolving. It's just unfortunate that this issue was probably one of the most destructive issues that uh, these cars could have been, you know, could have been dealt. But we all just got to stay strong and, you know, do what we can to work with GM and LG and, and get through this recall and get through these battery replacements. And like I said, it, it looks like, you know, in the next two or three months, this is going to be full steam ahead. And like I said, this article was posted yesterday and they're saying that, you know, they have resumed production and they're doing what they can do to remedy the root causes of these battery fires. And it looks like we have a light at the end of the tunnel. So I'll leave you guys with that. As always, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, Start a conversation down in the comments or feel free to reach out to me directly via email. That information is in the uh, channel information. I wish all of you to have a great rest of the week uh, and I'll see you guys down below. Take care.